Hello and welcome back to the Friday learning series. Today we are going to learn basic CSS by building a cafe menu. All right, so again we are doing the responsive web design certification course. And last week we did the cat photo app. That's done. So today we are going to do this one. Learn basic CSS by building a cafe menu. Okay. And it's going to have 91 mini tutorials. So basically CSS tells the browser how to display your web page. You can use CSS to set the color, font, size and other aspects of HTML elements. In this course we will learn CSS by designing a menu page for a coffee web page. Let's start and this is what we are going to build. It is a coffee menu. Let's start coding and step one, as you learned in the last few steps of the cat photo app, there is a basic structure needed to start building your web page. Add the doc type HTML tag and an HTML element with a length attribute of en. So every HTML document needs to start with a doc type declaration and this basically tells the browser how to uh, interpret the HTML so it will know that it's going to be the new version, the HTML5 version. So, and for the HTML5, the doc type declaration, it is this one. Okay, and then below this, we need to add the root element, which is the HTML element. And in the opening HTML tag, we are going to add the lang attribute, which stands for language. So the browser will know what um, what our HTML, what language our HTML document is written in. So in this case, we are going to provide the EN language code, which stands for English. We can move on. Step two, add a head element within the HTML element so you can add a title element. The title element's text should be coffee menu. And by the way, the code that we write before in the previous steps, it's going to be appear here. Okay, and you can see the closing HTML tag, it's right here below. So we need to add the head element and remember the head element contains information about our web page. So we are going to add the title element to give a title to our HTML document and you know this title it's going to appear Right here, I mean, not on this page, but if it would be our web page, then it would appear on the browser like this Learn Basic CSS, okay? And it will be coffee menu. Step three, the title is one of several elements that provide extra information not visible on the web page, but it is useful for search engines or how the page gets displayed. Inside the head element, nest a meta element with an attribute named charset, set to the value UTF-8 to tell the browser how to encode characters for the page. Note that meta elements are self-closing. So we need to add the meta element and since it's self-closing, it doesn't need a closing tag. And we are going to provide the char set attribute. 
which is for character encoding. So the H our HTML document will be encoded correctly. So the value is UTF-8. Step four, to prepare to create some actual content, add a body element below the head element. Okay, so we need to provide the body element in order to display content in the browser. Next one, step five, it's time to add some menu content. Add a main element within the existing body element. It will eventually contain pricing information about coffee and desserts offered by the coffee or cafe. I think that's how you say it. So the main element. Uh, let me close this. Step six, the name of the cafe is Camper Cafe. Add an H1 element within your main element. Give it the name of the cafe in capitalized letters to make it stand out. Okay, H1. And it will be Camper Cafe. And you can already see the H1 appears here in the preview on the right. Step 7. To let visitors know the cafe was founded in 2020, add a P element below the H1 element with the text EST 2020. So I guess that means that stands for established. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, P element, which is a paragraph element, and we are going to add the text. 2020. Step 8. There will be two sections on the menu, one for coffees and one for desserts. Add a section element within the main element so you can so you have a place to put all the coffees available. So we are just going to add a section element. Next one. Step nine. Create an H2 element in the section element and give it the text coffee. Okay, next one. Step 10. Up until now, you have been limited regarding the presentation and appear appearance of the content you create. To start taking control, add a style element within the head element. So here in the head element below the title element, I'm going to add the style element. This is called the internal CSS. So when we are going to write CSS between the style tags, that is the internal CSS because it's inside the HTML document. Okay, and so that's it. We can move on. Step 11, you can add style to an element by specifying it in the style element and setting a property for it like this. So we have the element, what we are going to select, and then this is called a declaration, which consists of a property and then a value. So center your H1 element by setting its text align property to the value center. So this is going to center the H1 element, the text. 
So we are going to select the H1 and we provide the brackets and inside the brackets we are going to add the text align property. We need to add the colon and the value it's going to be center and we need to even though it's working in the browser but every declaration we need to end it or close it with a semicolon like this okay we can move on step 12 in the previous step you used a type selector to style the h1 element center the h2 and p elements by adding a new type selector for each one to the existing style element so when we select the element by their name so if i select the p element then i provide p if i select the as you can see in the example the h1 then i need to provide the h1 so this is the type selector so select the h2 again text align property the value center and another one for the p element Step 13. You now have three type selectors with the exact same styling. You can add the same group of styles to many elements by creating a list of selectors. Each selector is separated with commas like this. So you can see in the example we have selector 1 and then another one which have the same uh, property value pair. Delete the three existing type selectors and replace them with one selector list that centers the text for the H1, H2 and P elements. So by doing this, we are um, making the code shorter and also more readable. So we are going to provide a comma because it's going to apply to the H2 and also for the P element as well. Step 14. You have styled three elements by writing CSS inside the style tags. This works, but since there will be many more styles, it's best to put all the styles in a separate file and link to it. The recommended way to add CSS is with the external style sheet to keep things separated. So HTML going to be in one file and then CSS it's going to be in another file. We have created a separate style.css file for you and switched the editor view to that file. You can change between files with the tabs at the top of the editor. Start by rewriting the styles you have created into the styles.css file. Make sure to exclude the opening and closing style tags. So up here we have two tabs. One is the index.html file and this one is the style.css file which is uh, currently empty. So we go back here. So this is the HTML what we wrote so far. And I'm just going to copy the this CSS rule. And we go back to styles.css here. Right here, it's actually the styles.css file where the instructions are. So I'm going to just paste it here, just like that. And it, remember, it said when you are in the CSS file, you don't need to provide these style tags. So there are no tags inside the CSS file, only in HTML. Okay, so we can move on. Step 15. 
Now that you have the CSS in the styles.css file, go ahead and remove the style element and all its content. Once it is removed, the text that was centered will shift back to the left. So, ah, okay, so I, I actually went ahead. I already put the rule, this rule, to the here, styles.css. Okay, let me remove it because that's what the instruction says. Okay, so it's removed. And you might wonder, if you are new to this, that why the text went back to the left side. It is, so even though we have the rules, the text align center declaration in the CSS file, but the external CSS file, it is not linked to our HTML document yet. So it doesn't recognize it. So that's why the text in the preview, it moved back where it was before. Step 16, now you need to link the styles.css file so the styles will be applied again. Nest a self-closing link element in the head element. Give it a real attribute value style sheet and an href attribute value of styles.css. So inside the head element, I'm going to add it below the title. I'm going to add the link uh, element and it's also self-closing so you don't need a closing tag for that and inside here we need to provide the rel attribute which specifies the relation relationship between the two documents and in this case it will tell us that this is a style sheet so the href attribute stands for hypertext reference and it's the path to the other file. And in this case, since the CSS, it's in the same place, in the same, let's say, folder as the HTML file, we're just going to provide the name of the file, which is styles.css. And as you can see, now the text got centered in the, bra in the preview. Next one. Step 17. For the styling of the page to look similar on mobile as it, as it does on a desktop or laptop, you need to add a meta element with a special content attribute. Add the following within the head element. So... We are going to add a new meta uh, element with the name attribute and the name attribute will have the value viewport. So we need to provide another attribute, the content attribute, and inside the content attribute, we are going to add like a um, key value pair. So we are going to add the width, which is going to be equal to device width, which means when the HTML document gets opened in our, uh, on our device, then it's going to be the width of the device. So if I open it on a mobile phone, the width of the document going to be uh, as the mobile phone screen. If I open it in desktop, then the width, it's going to be the width of the desktop. So, the and then we provide the comma and we add the initial scale equal 1.0. So, this sets the initial zoom level um, of the HTML document whenever we open the HTML file on our device. So if we would not provide this, the initial scale, then on mobile, maybe the text would appear much more bigger. So if we add the initial scale, it will be set to this initial zoom. So now the text will be 
how to say fit for the device. Okay, I'm just going to copy this whole thing and provide it below the first meta element. Step 18. The text is centered again, so the link to the CSS file is working. Add another style to the file that changes the background color property to brown for the body element. So, below the first rule, I'm going to add, actually I'm going to target the body because we are going to change the background for that. So, body. And we are going to add the background color property. And the value will be brown. Just like that. Next one. Step 19. That brown background makes it hard to read the text. Change the body element's background color to be burly wood. So it has some color, but you are still be able to read the text. So we need to change the value here to burly wood. Okay, so now the background got like this light brown color. Next one. Step 20. The div element is used mainly for design layout purposes, unlike the other content elements you have used so far. Add a div element inside the body element, and then move all the other elements inside the new div. Inside the opening div tag, add the id attribute with a value of menu. So, the div element, it is not semantic, like the other elements, so the section, it indicates that's going to be a section, the p element indicates that's going to be a paragraph, the div, it's not saying anything, it's just a container element, let's say. So it basically groups together elements when we want to style them in a certain way. So I'm going to add the the div element here you can doesn't matter you put it in the uh, uh actually i think i need to add outside of the main okay so we are outside of the main and then it says move all the other elements. So that means the whole main element and its elements that it contains, we need to move it inside this div. Okay, nothing changed in the preview. And inside the opening div tag, we are going to add the id attribute, which is going to be the value menu. Step 21. The goal now is to make the div not take up the entire width of the page. The CSS width property is perfect for this. You can use the ID selector to target a specific element with an ID attribute. An ID selector is defined by placing the hash symbol directly in front of the element's ID value. For example, if an element has the ID of cat, then you would target that element like this. So we have the hash symbol and then the word cat. Use the menu selector to give your element a width of 300 pixels. When we select an element with their ID, then that is called the ID selector. So we provide a hash and then the name of the the value of the id in this case we have the id with the menu for the div element 
And then we are going to set the width to 300 pixels. Next one. Step 22. Comments in CSS look like this. In your style sheet, comment out the line containing the background color property and value so you can see the effect of only styling the uh, menu element. This will make the background white again. So by commenting out, we are going to use this forward slash, the asterisk, and then again asterisk, and then to close the comment, the forward slash. Okay, next one. Step 23. Now use the existing menu selector to send the background color of the div element to be burly wood. So now we are going to see uh, how is this div element is placed on the page. So background color and then burly wood for the color. So you can see this is 300 pixels wide. Step 24. Now it's easy to see that the text is centered inside the menu element. Currently, the width of the menu element is specified in pixels. Change the width properties value to be 80% to make it 80% the width of its parent element, which is the body. So this is going to be 80%. So you will see it got much bigger because uh, the body is at 100%. So if we set the menu element to 80%, it's going to be 80% of the body. Next one. Step 25. Next, you want to center the menu horizontally. You can do this by setting its margin left and margin right properties to auto. Think of the margin as invisible space around an element. Using these two margin properties, center the menu element within the body element. So... We are going to add the margin left property, the value going to be auto, and then, so you see, it took all the available space from the right when we set the margin left auto. But when we are going to set the margin right auto as well, the space between the right and the left side, it's going to be equal. So margin right going to be auto. So now you can see the space between the left side and then on the right side, it is equal. Step 26. So far you have been using type and ID selectors to style elements. However, it is more common to use a different selector to style your elements. A class selector is defined by a name with a dot directly in front of it like this. So we have the dot and then the name of the class. Change the existing menu selector into a class selector by replacing menu with a class named menu. So we are going to remove the hash since it's no longer will be an ID selector and we are going to provide the dot in front of the uh, menu text and this indicates this is a class selector now. Step 27. To apply the class styling to the div element, remove the ID attribute and add a class attribute to the div element's opening tag. Make sure to set the class value to menu. So we don't need the ID uh, attribute anymore, so we are going to remove that from here. 
and then we are going to add the class attribute with the value menu. So now the styles applied back again. Step 28. Since the cafe's main product for sale is coffee, you could use an image of coffee beans for the background of the page. Delete the comment and its contents inside the body type selector. Okay, so we are going to delete all this. And now add a background image property and set its value to this URL. So for the background, we not only can add colors, but images as well. So for that, we are going to use the background image property. And for the value, we are going to add the URL. So inside this URL function, we have the uh, actual URL or the path to this image. And we are going to close it with the semicolon. Step 29. It's looking good. Time to start adding some menu items. Add an empty article element under the coffee heading. It will contain a flavor and price for each coffee you currently offer. So, under the H2 heading, we are going to add the article element. Okay, next one. Step 30. Article elements commonly contain multiple elements that have related information. In this case, it will contain a coffee flavor and a price for that flavor. Nest two P elements inside your article element. The first one's text should be French vanilla and the second's text should be three point and zero zero. So as it says in the description, the article element will contain elements that have related information. So what is the related information? The name of the coffee we offer and then the price that's related to it. So one P element, it's going to be for the name of the coffee. In this case, it's going to be French vanilla. And below that, we are going to add another P element. And this will be the price of the French vanilla coffee. Okay. Step 31. Starting below the existing coffee price pair, add the following coffee and prices using article elements with two nested P elements inside each. As before, the first P elements text should contain the coffee flavor and the second P elements text should contain the price. So we are going to do the same thing with these examples right here. So going to be a new article element. Okay. And going to copy paste it three more times. And then we are going to have two P elements, one for the coffee name and one for the coffee price. So now I'm going to just copy paste these two P elements inside each article element. Just like that. And then let's add the second example, going to be Caramel Macchiato. And then the price, 
3.75. Okay, the next example, pumpkin spice. And that will be 3.50. Next one, hazelnut. And that will be 4.00. And then mocha, the last one. And that is 4.50. Okay, we can move on. Step 32. The flavors and prices are currently stacked on top of each other and centered with their respective P elements. It would be nice if the flavor was on the left and the price was on the right. Add the class name flavor to the French vanilla P element. So remember in the CSS file we have the P elements as well a uh, text align center. So that's why everything is in the center of the page. But what we want is the name of the coffee appear here on the left and then the price of the coffee appear here on the right. So in this example, we have to add the class attribute and the value flavor for the French vanilla coffee. Step 33. Using your new flavor class as a selector, set the text align properties value to left. So, remember, it's a class selector, so we need to add the dot and then the name of the class, which is flavor. Okay, brackets, and then the text align property, it will be set to left. So you can see now the French vanilla coffee name, it went to the left. Step 34. Next, you want to align the price to the right. Add a class named price to your P element that has 3.00 as its text. So now the price is going to have also a class attribute with the value price. Now align the text to the right for the elements with the price class. So again, it's going to be a class selector. So we are going to provide a dot and then the name of the class, which is price. And we have, and we have to put text align property with the right value. So now you see the price went on the right side. Step 36. That is kind of what you want, but now it would be nice if the flavor and price were on the same line. P elements are block level elements, so they take up the entire width of their parent element. So if you notice, the French vanilla is slightly higher or more up than the price, so they are not aligning on the same line. To get them on the same line, you need to apply some styling to the P elements so they behave more like inline elements. To do that, start by adding a class attribute with the value item to the first article element under the coffee heading. So for the article element, we are going to add a class attribute. It's going to be item. And we go to the next one. Step 37. The P elements are nested in an article element with the class attribute of item. You can style all the P elements nested anywhere in elements with a class named item like this. So using the above selector, add a display property with the value inline block so the P elements behave more like inline elements. So 
We are going to provide the dot and then the name of the class item. And then we are going to select the P element. And we are going to add the display property. We, got, we are going to set the value to inline block. So now what happened when the, so by default, P elements are block level elements. So they take the whole width of the parent element. But now we changed it to inline block, which means they are now inline elements, which means that the width, it's not going to expand anymore all the way to the uh, parent width. Okay, next. Step 38, that's closer, but the price didn't stay over on the right. This is because inline block elements only take up the width of their content. To spread them out, add a width property to the flavor and price class selectors that have a value of 50% each. So we are going to add the uh, width property to the flavor class selector and let's set the width to 50%. Okay, and then the width property for the price uh, class selector as well will be also 50%. Okay. Step 39. Well, that did not work. Styling the P elements as inline block and placing them on a separate lines in the code creates an extra space to the right of the first P element, causing the second one to shift to the next line. One way to fix this is to make each P element's width a little less than 50%. Change the width value to 49% for each class to see what happens. So basically, it says that since the P elements are inline block elements now, then there's an extra space between them. So if one element is 50%, the other one is 50%, that's 100% of the parent element. But if there's an extra space between them, it's going to push the second element away. So that's why um, it's on a new line, the price of the French vanilla coffee. We need to make these all just a little bit smaller. So in this case, it will be 49 and 49. You can see the price went on the same line as the French vanilla. So I can demonstrate this visually better. So I'm just going to open the dev tools. All right, so going to make this bigger as well. Just to show you what is going on, I'm going to select the uh, those two P elements to have the background uh, white for now. And let me put them back to 50% so you can see what it's going on. So you see, both of them are 50% of the parent element. What is the parent element? It's the article because they are in the article. But the article, it's a block level. So it's a block level element which goes from the left all the way to the right side of the parent element which is the body so also let me add a background a background of hmm i don't know gold maybe so this gold it's the article element 
and the two white, it's the paragraph elements. Remember the first paragraph element, which has the class name of uh, flavor, the text line it's on the left, so the content will be on the left here. Now the second paragraph, which has the class name uh, price, it has text line right, so now the content will be all the way to the right of the element. And since they both 50% of the parent element, which is this yellow gold, the article element, and since they are inline block right now, they have like a extra space between them. That's why the second paragraph element doesn't fit here. So because of that, we added the weight not to be 50, but 49. So it can be slightly smaller. So now you can see this is the space I was talking about that stays there. But then currently we have some space here for the uh, after the price, but it's going to be fixed. But I just wanted to show you this visually, what is going on and why the price got pushed down. Okay, so going to remove this back, what I just wrote, and going to close the DevTools. Okay, and we can move on. Step 40. That worked, but there is a still a little space on the right of the price. So remember, there is this little white space after the price, between the price and the edge of the menu element. So you could keep trying various percentages for the width. Instead, use the backspace key on your keyboard to move the P element with the class price next to the P element with the class flavor so that they are on the same line in the editor. Make sure there is no space between them. So we are going to click here in the front of the opening tag of the uh, price P element and we are going to just use the backspace key to go back to go up until it's reaching the closing tag of the flavor p element so they are on the same line okay we can go to the next step 41 now go ahead and change both the flavor and price class width to be 50 percent again so we can go with 50 and then another 50. So now you can see that the price moved all the way to the edge of the menu element. So this is because when the second P element starts on a new line in the HTML code, then it looks like it creates, and when the two paragraph elements are inline block then there's going to be some extra space there so when we in the html code mm, here so they are actually on the same line but the editor it's smaller let me expand it so you can see they are on the same line and that's why there's no extra space between them. So if we add 50% and 50% as the width, now they are going to be aligned correctly. Okay, so we can go to the next one. Now that you know it works, you can change the remaining article and P elements to match the first set. Start by adding the class item to the other article elements. So for the remaining article elements, we are going to add the class attribute with the value item. And I'm just going to copy and paste it. Okay, next one. Uh, 
All right. Step 43. Next, position the other P elements to be on the same line with no space between them. So, same thing. We are going to move the price P elements next to the flavor P element. So, just like that. Step 44. To complete the styling, add the applicable class names flavor and price to all the remaining P elements. Okay, so the first P element is going to have the class attribute with the value flavor and going to copy paste it. And then the second P element going to have the class attribute with the value uh, price. And I'm also going to copy paste in the rest. Okay, we are done. Step 45. If you make the width of the page preview smaller, you will notice at some point some of the text on the left starts wrapping around to the next line. This is because the width of the P elements on the left side can only take up to 50% of the space. Let's make the preview smaller to show you what it is talking about. So, so here you can see the caramel macchiato, it goes to, it wraps on another line, even though there's still some space after, uh, between the price and the name. And this is because the name and the price, I mean the flavor and the price, they are both 50% of this menu container. So... We are going to fix that. Since you know the prices on the right have significantly fewer characters, change the flavor class with value to be 75% and the price class with value to be 25%. So we are going to have more space for the flavor P elements. It's going to be 75% and we are going to have 25% for the price. Okay, so now when I make it smaller again, it's still, you can see it's really small now, the screen and the, and the caramel macchiato still stays uh, together. Okay, next one. Step 46. You will come back to styling the menu in a few steps. But for now, go, aha go ahead and add a second section element below the first for displaying the desserts offered by the cafe. So, under the first section element, we are going to create another one, which is going to be for the desserts. Step 47, add an H2 element in the new section and give it the text desserts. All right. Step 48, add an empty article element under the desserts heading. Give it a class attribute with the value item. Let's give it a class item. Step 
Step 49. Nest two P elements inside your article element. The first one's text should be donut and the second's text 1.50. Put both of them on the same line, making sure there's no space between them. So the first one will be the donut and the second one right next to it. It will be 150. Step 50. For the two P elements you just added, add dessert as the value of the first P elements class attribute and the value price as the second P elements class attribute. So, the first P element will have the class, the value dessert, and the second P element will have the class attribute with the value price. Step 51. Something does not look right. You added the correct class attribute value to the P element with donut as its text, but you have not defined a selector for it. The CSS rule for the flavor class already sets the properties you want. Add the dessert class as an additional selector for this CSS rule. So since the dessert's name, the donut, is going to have the same with 75% and text align left, then we are, instead of duplicating the rule, we are going to add the class dessert next to the flavor. So we are going to add the comma and then the dot because it's a class selector and then going to add dessert. Step 52. Below the dessert you just added, add the rest of the desserts and prices using three more article elements, each with two nested P elements. Each element should have the correct dessert and price text, and all of them should have the correct classes. So, I'm going to create three more article elements. And each article element will contain two paragraph elements. Okay, another one. And the first one will be the class uh, dessert. And then the last class will have the attribute class of the value price. So this I'm going to copy two more times and then let's add the second dessert which is going to be cherry pie and then the price 275 the third dessert cheesecake and then the price will be 3.00 and then the last dessert cinnamon roll. The price will be 2.50. Step 53. You can give your menu some space between the content and the signs with various padding properties. Give the menu class a padding left and a padding right with the same value 20 pixel. So add a padding left 20 pixels and then a padding right 
20 pixels. So you see now we have 20 pixels on the sides of the menu element. Step 54, that looks better. Now try to add the same 20 pixel padding to the top and bottom of the menu. So going to be padding top property with 20 pixels value and then padding bottom with 20 pixels value. Step 55. Since all four sides of the menu have the same internal spacing, go ahead and delete the four properties and use a single padding property with the value 20 pixels. So when all the four sides have the same value, we, we can use the shorthand, which is just the padding property, and we are going to add 20 pixels, which will be applied to all four sides. Step 56, the current width of the menu will always take up 80% of the body elements width. On a very wide screen, the coffee and dessert appear far apart from their prices. Add a max width property to the menu class with a value of 500 pixel to prevent it from growing too wide. So because the menu element it is set to be 80% the width of the body element if you are viewing this page on a very wide screen then the menu element will be too wide and then the the coffee and the dessert names we and the prices will be too far apart so to prevent that it is advising us to add a max width of 500 pixels. So to show you that, let me expand the preview and you can see this is not really good looking because uh, the information, it's just too far away from each other. So let's add the max width property with 500 pixels so now it will no longer be bigger than 500 pixels no matter how wide our screen is but when we are going smaller it is going to be always 80 percent as you can see of the screen so that is 80 percent that is still 80 percent and then when it's reached 500 pixels then it is not going to grow more. Okay, next one. Step 57. You can change the font family of text to make it look different from the default font of your browser. Each browser has some common fonts available to it. Change all the text in your body by adding a font family property with the value sans serif. This is a fairly common font that is very readable. So inside this body selector, we are going to add the font family property with the value sans serif. And you can see the font style changed in the preview. Next. Step 58. It is a bit boring for all the text to have the same font family. You can still have the majority of the text sans serif and make just the H1 and H2 elements different using a different selector. Style both the H1 and the H2 elements using a single selector so that these elements text use impact font. So. Let me select the H1, comma, and then the H2 element. And let's set the font family for them to be 
impact. So now the H1 and the H2s have different font styles than the rest of the text. Step 59, you can add a fallback value for the font family by adding another font name separated by a comma. Fallbacks are used in instances where the initial is not found or available. Add the fallback font serif after the impact font. So um, maybe some devices or maybe certain browsers uh, they don't have the impact font family available, so we need to have a fallback. So if they cannot find the impact font family, then it will go back to serif. So let me add a comma here after the impact and then add serif. Okay. Step 60. Make the EST 2020 text italicized by creating an established class selector and giving it the font style property with the value italic. So we need to create a class selector. So it's going to be a dot and then it's going to be called established. And then the font style property going to be italic. Okay, nothing changed yet because we don't have uh, the class established on any element yet. Step 61, now apply the established class to the EST 2020 text. So to this paragraph, which has this text, we are going to add the class attribute and then the value going to be established. And now you can see that the text here, it got italicized. Step 62, the typography of heading elements, H1, H2, is set by default values of users' browsers. Add two new type selectors, H1 and H2. Use the font size property for both, but use the value 40 pixel for the H1 and 30 pixel for the H2. So what you can see, the size of the H1 element, this is the default size of this browser. And then this is the size of the H2s for this current browser. So if we want to change the size of the fonts, we are going to add the font size property to each of this. But for the H1, we are going to have the font size 40 pixels. Okay. And then below, let's create a font size property for the H2 will be 30 pixels. Okay. Step 63. Add a footer element below the main element where you can add some additional information. Okay, let's find the end of the main element and below here we are adding the footer element. Step 64. Inside the footer add a P element, then nest an anchor element in the P that links to this URL and has the text visit our website. So inside the footer we need a P element. Inside this P element we are going to have an anchor tag and then the text of the anchor tag will be visit our website and then the opening tag in the opening tag of the anchor tag we are going to add the href attribute and then the url here 
So when we click that link, that text, it will take us right there to that uh, the free, free code camp site. Okay, and you can see the link appeared here in the footer. Step 65. Add a second P element below the one with the link and give it the text 123 free code camp drive. So let's add another P element below this one. And then the text will be 123 free code camp drive. Next one. Step 66, you can use an HR element to display a divider between sections of different content. First, add an HR element between the P element with the class established and the first section element. Note that HR elements are self-closing. So let's add the HR element between the established so this one has the established class and between the sections so between these two we are going to add the hr tag and it's a self-closing tag so we don't need a closing tag after that and you see we have this white line here in the uh, preview Step 67. The default properties of a nature element will make it appear as a thin, light gray line. You can change the height of the line by specifying a value for the height property. Change the height of the HR element to be 3 pixels. So we are going to select the HR. Remember, we are in the CSS file and we are going to add the height property. To be three pixels. Step 68. Change the background color of the HR element to brown so it matches the color of the coffee beans. Okay, so we're gonna use the background color property and the value brown. Okay. Step 69. Notice the gray color along the edges of the line. Those edges are known as borders. Each side of an element can have a different color or they can all be the same. Make all the edges of the H or element the same color as the background of it using the border, border color property. So, to remove these, uh, maybe you can see it better if I zoom in, okay, so you can see that it has this gray outline, this gray border. So, we are going to add the same color as the background of this HR. So, add the border color property brown. Step 70. Notice how the thickness of the line looks bigger. The default value of a property named border width is one pixel for all edges of HR elements. By changing the border to the same color as the background, the total height of the line is 5 pixel because 3 pixel plus because 3 pixels we added the height for the line. But we have the top border and the bottom border, each of them 1 pixel and 1 pixel, so that adds up to 2 pixels. So altogether the height is 5 pixels. Change the height property of the HR to be 
two pixels, so the total height of it becomes four pixels. So the height going to change to two. Step 71. Go ahead and add another rachor element between the main element and the footer element. Okay. Step 72. To create a little more room around the menu, add 20 pixels of space on the inside of the body element using the padding property. So, inside the body, we are going to add the padding property of 20 pixels. So, you can see here on the top, we have a little more space. Step 73, focusing on the menu items and prices, there is a fairly large gap between each line. Use the existing selector that targets all the P elements nested in elements with the class named item and set their top and bottom margin to be 5 pixels. So here the, all the P elements are selected and we are going to add the property uh, so margin top will be 5 pixels and also margin bottom will be 5 pixels. So you see the space got much smaller between them. Step 74, using the same style selector in the previous step, make the font size of the items and prices larger by using a value of 18 pixels. So for all the P elements, we are going to have the font size property to be 18 pixels. Step 75, changing the margin bottom to 5 pixel looks great. However, now the space between the cinnamon roll menu item and the second HR element does not match the space between the top HR element and the coffee heading. Add some more space by creating a class name bottom line using 25 pixels for the margin top property. So, since it's a class, we are adding a dot and then the name of the class, which is going to be bottom line, then the brackets, and we are going to add margin top property of 25 pixels. Nothing has changed yet because we don't have any element with the class bottom line yet. Step 76, now add the bottom line class to the second HR element, so the styling is applied. So, let's add the class attribute with the value bottom line. So now you can see between this last HR element and the last item in the desserts, there is more space. Step 77. Next, you are going to be styling the footer element. To keep the CSS organized, add a comment at the end of the styles.css with the text footer. So remember to create the comments. We are going to have two slashes, forward slashes, and then between them two asterisks, and between that the text. Step 78, moving down to the footer element, 
make all the text have a value of 14 pixels for the font size. So we can select the footer element like that and then get the font size property to be 14 pixels. Step 79, the default color of a link that has not yet been clicked on is typically blue. The default color of a link that has already been visited from a page is typically purple. To make the footer links the same color regardless if a link has been visited, use a type selector for the anchor element and use the value black for the color property. So you can see this is the link here. It has been already visited, that's why it has the purple color. So let's target the anchor element, which is the link, and add the color property, which is going to be black. So now the text turned black. Step 80. You change properties of a link when the link has actually been visited by using a pseudo selector that looks like uh, you have the name of the element, column, and then you have the state it can be visited, for example. So change the color of the footer visitor website link to be gray when a user has visited the link. So remember, this link was purple initially, and that means when the link is purple, it's been visited. So now we are going to select the uh, anchor tag again, which is the link, but we are going to use a pseudo selector here. So colon, and then in what state we are going to uh, add this color property to the link at the visited state. So the state will be visited, brackets, and then the color will be gray. So now you see it turned gray. Step 81. You change properties of a link when the mouse hovers over them by using a pseudo selector that looks like the name of the selector, of the name of the element, colon, and then hover. Change the color of the footer visitor website link to be brown when a user hovers over it. So when I hover over, it doesn't do anything. We only get this uh, pointer cursor. So select the link, the anchor uh, element again with the state of hover. So the color will be brown. So now when I hover over it, you can see that the text is becoming brown. You change properties of a link when the link is actually being clicked by using a pseudo selector that looks like this. So it's the name of the element, colon, and then active. Change the color of the footer, visitor website link to be white when clicked on. So whenever I'm here on the link and when I will click with my mouse on this link, it should turn white. So Again, let's select the uh, anchor tag with the state of active. And then add the color white. So now when I click on it, I'm still holding the button on the mouse and it is white because I'm actually uh, clicking on it, okay? Step 83, to keep 
with the same color theme you have already been using, black and brown. Change the color for when the link is visited to black and use brown for when the link is actually clicked. So when it's visited, we are going to change this to uh, black. And then when it's clicked, we are going to change this to brown. Step 84. The menu text Camper Cafe has a different space from the top than the address space at the bottom of the menu. This is due to the browser having some default top margin for the H1 element. Change the top margin of the H1 element to zero to remove all the top margin. So it is saying the space here it is much bigger than the space down here. So to make it equal, we are going to remove the top uh, margin from the H1 element. So it's going to be margin top property with zero value. So you can see now the H1 jumped up a little bit. Step 85. To remove some of the vertical space between the H1 element and the text EST2020, change the bottom margin of the H1 to 15 pixels. So, uh, so the space between the H1 and this text here, we, we have to change it to 15 pixels so for the bottom margin. So going to be margin bottom and then 15 pixels okay next one step 86 now the top spacing looks good the space below the address at the bottom of the menu is a little bigger than the space at the top of the menu and the h1 element to decrease the default margin space below the address p element, create a class selector named address and use the value 5 pixels for the margin bottom property. So, since it's going to be a class selector, we are going to add the dot and then the name will be address for this class and the margin bottom property will be 5 pixels. Step 87. Now apply the address class to the P element containing the street address 123 free code camp drive. So this P element it's going to have the class attribute with the value address. Okay, and a little bit the space got cut off from here below. Step 88. The menu looks good, but other than the coffee beans background image, it is mainly just text. Under the coffee heading, add an image using the URL, this one, and give the image an alt value of coffee icon. So below this H2, we are going to create an image element. And since it's a self-closing element, we don't need a closing tag for it. We need the source attribute. And the value will be this URL. And then we need the alt attribute, which is going to be coffee icon. Okay. Step 89. The image you added is not centered horizontally like the coffee heading above it. Image elements are like inline elements. To make the image behave like heading elements, which are block level, 
create an image type selector and use the value block for the display property and use the applicable margin left and margin right values to center it horizontally. So we are going to select the image element and for the display property we are going to add block since they are in line and we are going to add now the margin left and margin right auto so it can be centered so margin left auto and then margin right auto so now it is centered and let me show you if we don't provide the display block so if we don't add the display block if it stays in line the image element then the margin left and margin right, right it is not applied Step 90. Add one last image under the desserts heading using this URL and give the image an alt value of pi icon. So again, another image element. The source attribute going to be this URL. And then the alt attribute will be pi icon. And you can see the pi icon is centered as well because it's an image element and we already added the image element, the rule for the image element here. So step 91, it would be nice if the vertical space between the H2 elements and their associated icons was smaller. The H2 elements have default top and bottom margin space, so you could choose so you could change the bottom margin of the H2 elements to say 0 or another number. There is an easier way. Simply add a negative top margin to the image elements to pull them up from their current positions. Negative values are created using a minus in front of the value. To complete this project, go ahead and use a negative top margin of 25 pixel in the image type selector so going to be the margin top and then minus 25 pixels so the images we are, they are uh, moved uh, 25 pixels up okay so that's it we are done with this tutorial and it taught us the basics of css okay so let me go back and going to show you what are we going to do next week so let me close this and then next week we are going to learn css colors and we are going to build a set of colored markers. All right. So thanks for following along. And I will see you next Friday in the next tutorial.